Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm going to go over what I believe the top 20 picks in our in my Elmwood League draft are going to be. Now, I want to preface this by saying, well, I want to preface this by saying a few things. First of all, these are not just first round picks. This is going to spill over into the second round because there are two teams that will not have picks in our first round and there are 20 teams in the league. So that means that the first round is really only going to be 18 picks, but we're going to play this as though every team or or 20 teams did get to pick in the first round, although that won't be the case. So that's, uh, that's the first thing. The second thing I'm going to say as I go through this list is you need to bear in mind that there are a lot of factors at work here. Um, it's not necessarily, some guy may not be the best player. Some guy might not be, um, you know, some guy may be an older player who's been around a little bit. Um, but maybe there's a team out there that just needs a veteran presence in their lineup, somebody who can get on base, can hit, whatever. And the guy's been around the league, and he is in our draft because, you know, he had to be released because he was his free agent um, status was up. So, um, so that's one thing to bear in mind. Also, the starting pitchers. Uh, some of them, you know, there's teams that are that are going to be building for the future. So some teams may take a guy with only 40 innings pitched because they're building for the future and this guy's a building block and they want him. Even though there may be starting pitchers out there, veteran starting pitchers, whatever, who have more innings, are better, you know, whatever, would be better for this year right here, but this is, you know, this is a keeper league that's been around for 20 plus years, so teams will be thinking about the future. So I will put up the cards of the team, of the players that I believe are going to be picked, and now normally a list like this might be done from 20 going up to 1, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go from 1 down to 20, these are all good players, and um, so we're going to go in order like that. Now, um, one thing I will say about the number one pick in the draft is that we already know it, because that person has already made clear that this is going to be the first pick of the draft, and that is Vlad Guerrero, and there's his card right there. Take a good look at it. He will be the first pick in the Elmwood draft this year. Now the reason, part of the reason, I mean he's obviously a good player, but part of the reason that he will be picked is because the guy who's picking him, way back when this league started, we drafted everybody from scratch. And he took Vlad Guerrero Sr. So, um he's going to take his son uh, with his first pick and he just happens to also be good so there's that I believe the second pick in the draft will be Fernando Tati Jr. so now we've got two sons of former major leaguers and there's his card and he uh, he is a shortstop 2E36, so he's going to make some errors. He's a stealing B and a running one to 17, in addition to what you saw on the card there. He had 22 homers, so yeah, that's going to be, I believe that's going to be, he's going to be up there, but I, you know, personally, I think he should be the second pick. Um, I believe the next pick would be Bo Bichette. Now, there are better hitters than Bo Bichette, and here's his card, but he's a shortstop, and that also gives him a little bit of premium value. He is a shortstop 3E28, uh, just a stealing C and a running 1 to 13, but he had 11 home runs and 196 at bats, and he hit 311. So. I think he's going to be up there, and then uh, 
what we've got next. And now this, maybe this guy would actually have been before Bichette, but I'm going to say no because he doesn't play as premium a position as Bichette does, and that is Alonzo, Mr. Pete Alonzo of the Mets, and that's his card right there. And, of course, you know, he had 53 homers and 120 RBIs. But he's not a good first baseman, and he doesn't run or steal. He's a running 1-12, to stealing E. But he can, he can jack the homer out of the park, and that's what some people are going to want. Next we have Jordan Alvarez, I believe, would be the next pick. And there's his card. He's on Houston. Not sure if he did this well because of banging trash cans or not, but he had 27 home runs and 313 at bats, and he was a left field five. So he's a left field five with a plus one arm, so that isn't very good. Then we have the next guy up, I, I think, that would be picked um, is... I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to say him. Not yet. In fact, I, he would go down a couple. I would say the next guy would be Chris Paddock. And now we're starting to get into the pitching. And, of course, pitching is at a premium. So I think that that's what's going to happen, is Chris Paddock would be the next guy to be picked. And uh, he, last year, was 9-7 and seven for the Padres, with uh, 141 innings pitched, which means in our league, if you have 140 or more innings pitched, you can pitch the entire season with no restrictions. And that's also why he would be up as high as he was, part of it. But he was good last year. He struck out 153 guys in those 151 innings. And like I said, pitching's at a premium, so he might even go possibly above a couple of those other guys, but, um, but we'll see. So next, I would say Mr. DJ LeMayhew, and this is one of the guys I was talking about when I said that there are older players, you know, players that have been around a little bit who might be picked, but, I mean, he hit 327, he had 26 home runs, knocked in 102 RBIs, and he was a second base 1E5. And to boot, he was a stealing D, which is not good, but a running one to 14. So he can run the bases. So LeMayhew, I believe, he is, he's out there. He's available because he was a free agent. So I think he'd be next. Now, here's the guy I moved down a little bit, and that's Arrestus Aquino of Cincinnati. And there's his card. Now, I moved him down. I had him up higher. But I moved him down because I've been reading up about him and like baseball prospectus is, you know, saying that this is kind of a, a smoke and mirrors kind of a year that he had. Although he is a right field three with a negative three arm. So that's always good. And he's a stealing B and a running one to 15. But the 19 home runs and 205 at bats, I think he got off to a start where he hit like, I don't even remember what it was like 17 home runs in his first, I don't even, I mean, it was crazy, the start that he got off to. And then he cooled off a little bit, and that's part of what Baseball Prospectus said about him, is that he cooled off a little bit, and his only real skill, although really, I mean, if he's got a negative three throwing arm and a stealing B and a running one to 15, I don't know that, that his only real skill is power, but that's, that's what Baseball Prospectus says. Now, the next guy that we would have is Gio Urshela. And I think that he would be next. You know, everybody's always looking for a good third baseman, a solid guy to hold down third for him. And he hit 314 with a 355 on base percentage and had 21 home runs. Now, you have to remember also when we're talking about guys with 20 home runs, 21 home runs, 23 home runs, this was the year of the home run. So, I mean, everybody was hitting home runs. I probably would have had a couple. So, you know, that's, um, that's where we are on that. Now, I think the next guy 
would be my boy from the White Sox, Eloy Jimenez. And, uh, yeah, he's a little lower because he he only hit 267, only had a 315 on base percentage. Got off to a slow start, and that's why the, the final stats are like that. But he did hit 31 homers. Um, but he's also a stealing E and a running 1-12. to 12. And to top all of that off, he's a left field 4 with a 0 arm. So... You know that's why he's kind of a little lower down in the batting in the uh, or in the pick uh, range, and in fact this guy might actually be picked um, before him. But that's Kevin Biggio of Toronto. Toronto, of course, they have three guys that are going to be picked: um, Bichette, Vlad Guerrero, and Biggio. So there's his card, and he's a second base for E8. Um, He's a stealing B, though, and a running 1-14. to 14. And he can also play right, first, and left. So he could be a utility guy for somebody um, if they didn't particularly need a second baseman. So now here's another older guy, and that's uh, Keuchel. Dallas Keuchel is out there, and again, pitching is at a premium. There's going to be teams that are going to need pitching, um, and Dallas Keuchel will be an attractive uh, an attractive free agent for somebody to pick up. And of course, you know, it depends also. Like, I've got Keuchel all the way down here, but let's say the second team or the third team to pick, probably unlikely, but let's say the third team to pick is almost there and they just need a, a good starting pitcher to get them over the hump. And, um, you know, and they feel like maybe Keuchel's a better option than, um, Paddock, which I don't think is true, but you know, you never know. Somebody would think that. So the next guy I think in line that would be picked is Yastrzemski Mike Yastrzemski. And that's Yaz's grandson. And uh, that was his card. He hit 21 home runs and 371 at bats. Now, see, again, now, yeah, 21 home runs, but in 371 at bats. Um, and he is a left field two with a negative one arm and he hits lefty, which is always a plus. So there you go with that. And then we've got Starling Marte, who is in on the free agent list because he had to be released, uh, due to free agency and, um, the, the team I would assume couldn't keep him. So there he is. Now he's a center field two with a negative three arm. And he's, a, and he's a stealing A and a running 1-16, to 16, and he's really not that old. So it's not like he's, I mean, he's been around a little bit, but it's not like he's an aging veteran. All right, now we're going to start to get into guys that either don't didn't play a lot and they have high upside or there's some specific reason why they're on the list, but they're not like going to be all-stars that are going to, you know, pop out and grab you and say, yeah, I definitely need to be picked. And the first of those is going to be Aaron Savale. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Pitcher for the uh, Cleveland Indians. And he was 3-4 and four with a 234 earned run average. And he only had 58 innings pitched. So that's part of the reason why it's, you know, why he's way down here. He'd be a great pitcher for somebody, but you're only going to get 58 innings out of him in our league. The next one would be another guy that kind of fits that mold, and that's Zach Galen. And there's his card. Uh, starting pitcher for Arizona. He was 3-6 and six with a 281. Again, he only had 80 innings pitched, but 62 hits allowed in those 80 innings. But he can only pitch 80 innings for you. Uh, the next guy we got is another Arizona product, and that's going to be Carson Kelly, and there's his card. Now, there may be better hitters, better players, better overall, uh, you know, better um, overall players, but Carson Kelly also is a catcher, too, with a negative one arm, and, uh, and he hit 18 home runs and 314 at bats, so... Everybody would be looking for a catcher like that, I think. Next, you got Zach Playsack. And this is, I think, 
um, what is it, Dan Playsex, um, uh, nephew, I think that's right, I know he's related to Dan Playsex, so anyway, there's his card, he was 8-6 and six with a 381 earned run average, he had 116 innings pitched, the reason he's kind of low on this list, though, is because he isn't, the, he isn't great, I mean, he's not going to be, he does have a negative 6 hold, though, that would be nice, control the running game with Playsack. Next you have Jose Urquidy from Houston and that's his card and again he's lowest low on this list because he only has 41 innings pitched so in our league he can only pitch 31 innings or 41 innings so um, that's why he's that low. Uh, but he and he has a negative three hold. But again, you're only going to get 41 innings out of him. And now the last guy, and this is the only reliever on the list, but he's a reliever because in comparison to all other remaining position players, all other remaining starters, this guy sets himself apart as a reliever. And um, I mean, he's crazy good. So if you just need this, and he doesn't even have that many innings, but still, this card is just way too good, and that's Nick Anderson of Tampa Bay. So I'm thinking, like, if you're down near the bottom of the draft, down near the bottom of, like, every round, but you're down near the bottom of the first round, and you just need, like, a really great closer. Now, he can only pitch 21 innings, but, I mean, 21 innings, you put that guy at closer... And you get the 21 innings out of him and you, you know, do your best to tell Hal to limit him to one inning per, per appearance and only in close games. And then maybe even go into the pitcher logic lines and make sure he only comes in in uh, games that you have a chance to win. Could be big. So, that is my list. That's my 20 guys. I believe it was 20. Um... And so that would be, that's about what I would say first roundish would be the picks in our league. Now I would say to comment and let me know what you think, but you would have to know the league and know who all the available free agents are. And that's not something I have time to go into. So, um, but, you know, I mean, you would know that like first year players, anybody who's a first year player is available. Um, because we, we can't draft minor leaguers. So if they didn't have a card last year, they are available in our draft. Um, so what did you guys think of that list? Do you think that there's anybody that like, you know, you don't think that they really belong on the list? Like maybe Keichel? Again, there's going to be a team that is just thinking, hey, I just need a starter that can get me, you know, 10, 12, 15 wins, and Keuchel can do that, and if I can get that, I'm good to go. So, um, I'd be interested to hear what anybody thinks out there, especially if you're in Elmwood League and you happen to be watching this video. I'm sure I'm going to hear from at least a couple of those people, particularly the commissioner. So, um, yeah, but that's my list, and I'm sticking to it. And I uh, hope to be talking to you soon, but right now it's Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.